Have you ever been to a coffee farm? How about a competition coffee farm? Last week, I had the opportunity to go to Jardines del Eden, the coffee farm run by Colombian exporter CoffeeNet that focuses on high quality varietals grown at very high altitudes. Their priority for this farm is producing coffees fit for national and world level barista and brewers competitions. It's all about the cup quality and the flavor of these coffees. Now I could tell you more about this farm, but I'd rather show you and leave it to the professionals to give you all of the info. You'll meet Juan, Santiago, Carlos, another Carlos, and Natalia. They were so welcoming and generous enough to explain everything that goes into growing these small lots of super high quality Colombian coffees. I'm Roaster Cat, and this is Jardines de Leren. Come on, let's go. Jardines de Leden. This is mm -hmm. our first uh, competition farm mm. that we bought two years and a half ago. So it's only the first harvest coming out. It's just getting better and better. And there's another one which is three times this big, mm. which is called El Encanto, where we mm. have another 14 or 15 different varieties. Mm -hmm. How many varieties do you have on this farm? I think it's 27. Mm. So these are all Laurinas. I'm mm -hmm. not sure you've seen them before. Mm -hmm. And the Laurina is very, the physical appearance is like a Christmas tree, so <laughs> very easy fine to recognize. Tree. Like fine, little mm. fine. So these on your right is on Laurina. Mm -hmm. This here is uh, Yellow Geisha. Yellow Geisha, yeah. Well, there's a lot of growth at the top of. Uh -huh. Yeah, but that shouldn't be that, you know, like they have to... They should be they, chopping it? They, yeah, they chop it. Because if you put um, fertilizers and stuff like that, mm. that stuff will mm. take it. And you don't want to, right? You want the, I mean, the, that, the that cherries too? Growing, if you want uh, the growing kind of seed will take a lot of fertilizers and energy. Mm -hmm. And also because you don't want them to be too tall. Because it's mm. going to be very difficult to pick. Try. Because mm. uh -huh. the two beans. Mm. Yeah, throw the skin. Mm. Get them yeah. usually. Yeah. But I've had a lot of clients that it tastes so good. Mm. You get this. Mm. Cut. You get the the musilash and, mm -hmm. and try. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't choke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I would recommend like three video of you dying. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Just try them mm. all. Do the exact same thing with all the varieties. They yeah. all taste different. Mm. Yeah. The These ones taste. The yellow gesha tastes like sweet floral. Yeah, sweet floral, like almost like a like the sweetness of a cucumber. Like correct. Mm -hmm. And if you if you eat these ones, are mm -hmm. very different. Mm. Oh, Saurina. That's and the thing. shape is also different. So yeah, yeah, each cherry is really different. Let me just okay. This Saurina. Mm-hmm. It's less floral. It's more like mild. Just yum. The Laurina is one of the most expensive varieties to grow. To grow. Oh, it's yeah? Three times the fertilizer than oh, wow. the other varieties. Why? And also, uh, it suffers a lot of fungus, yeah. diseases. Uh, the mortality rate 50%. 50% of them just die, so you have to replant again. So you have to replant it. Oh. That's so high and so expensive. Yeah. You know, like, also because imagine if you plant. This, trees variety came, mm. yeah. this variety came from an island, so mm. it's genetically made for low altitudes, mm. right from the Union yeah. Islands, and here it's very high. I've seen Laurinas mm. in no, uh, another couple farms here in Colombia from Way lower good. altitude, behaving very good. super good. Mm. Like big, a lot, a lot of yield, you know, like high yield, but the cup profile of this one is way better than those. Mm. Mm. But they're just really testy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And these ones, not yellow gesha. I mean, this is Supposed all yellow gesha, but oh. it's impossible because I'm not sure if they're you know not this, stable yet. But mm. uh, yeah, so any mutation, mm. like the yellow or the pink color or any of that, can just come back to the original Correct. genetic mm. when right. you plant it. So even if this was planted with a yellow gesha yeah, yeah. seed, 
it can turns out hmm. red. Hmm. But it's only on the yellow mutations. It's only like three to five percent. Hmm. The ones that, that come back to the original very genetic. Good. Very good. Uh, three to but, five percent is nothing. Yeah. But like with the pink and, and the orange, it's it like twenty percent. Hmm. Six to seven uh, years to get it stable, and mm. that's when it can call. It can be called a varietal. Mm. Before that, they are called. <laughs> um, have you heard of but like here, a, like ninety five percent of F one, F two, F three, F four, F five, F six? From F6 is a varietal. Now you can call it mm, it's yellow geisha, mm. it's a varietal. Before mm. that it's like F3, but it can, F4. It can still, and here is still Laurina. Uh-huh. But from here, this is yellow Sudan Rume. Ah. So this one is not yellow geisha again. If you see the yield is quite bigger. I mean it produces way more than the yellow mm. geisha. And the taste is also different. That's good. Something that, that is important for why you to know, guys, is uh, why the varietals are so expensive when you're buying them. It's not only because of the fertilizers, but also because if you look at the space, there's almost three meters between three, one tree four. to another. Mm -hmm. And when you're planting Castillos or Caturra, you do 120, 130. Mm. So this is almost twice or more than mm. twice the, the space. Amount of space. Mm. I, I've seen that farms so planting sweet. varieties that are varietals that are make them closer like mm -hmm. they're closer but we we're not looking for high yields here we're looking for high quality so mm. that's why so the, the water we have three places where water grows here so there's water in that tank that's coming all the way from mm. the top it's literally uh you can drink mm. no water mm. yeah well wow, something <laughs> <laughs> So very labor intensive to uh, yeah. be picking up here. Imagine the picking here. Yeah. You're struggling to move around while holding a camera. Imagine with 50 <laughs> kilos of cherries on. I couldn't on do it. But what we have also uh, two horses and a mule pack, mm. even like that. When it's really cold, well, when it's really wet, it's impossible to do it with animals. Yeah. You just gotta do it slowly. The cut is being so wet, that yeah. we're actually losing trees. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So we get landslides among the, mm. the farm and there. then we lose 10, 20 trees every time. Oh, wow. You can see a little one down there as well. Yeah. So we'll use a plant called limoncillo which has big roots, mm -hmm. holds up really well the soil mm. to prevent these things. Mm. That helps, so that, that helps to like Hold secure it. the... Do they, they have really intense root systems yeah, or...? The root system goes really deep, mm. it's not really strong but it goes everywhere. So it holds up the, the soil and the dirt really well, yeah. the ground. Sick, sick tree. Mm. Have a look. So, that's something is happening, mm. or the, the soil is not taking the fertilizers mm. good enough, or or lack of shade. There's mm. multiple reasons in that mm -hmm. where agronomists come and they mm. say, okay, this is what you need to they do. They start correct. They mm. start making notes and say, those trees. Mm. Careful here, okay. <laughs> um, uh, you need to apply this, for example, you can see, you can see all this, look, all this line. Yeah. It's a little bit sick, you know, mm. all this line, but then from the other one, you don't. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it can be fertilizer, sometimes it can be water, there's too much water mm. on this part. So they have to move the water mm. somewhere. Mm. Create a different path for the water to... Right. The biggest problem we have in the last year and a half is gold. Oh. And yeah, too much moisture, too much mm. water in the, in the environment. Mm. So making these channels so that water, well anyway, we're in a big steep, so it's not as bad. Yeah. But when your land is flatter, then you need, you need the water to flow.
so beautiful. It's nice as we go up. Yeah. There is an influencer in the wild. <laughs> that's you. Yeah, yeah, that's you. <laughs> and of course that. Good one. Influencer in the wild. Good one. Influencer in the wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have two influencers here. Yeah. You two. Uh, one, so two, one, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> Pero con videitos viejos yo no vuelvo a subir nada. Si con los mismos que están ahí. Sí, sí, cuando yo veo que se empieza a... Orange Woods Woods here. It's actually quite dry. So... It's a lot to be... Yeah. Es carmo el mío. This is Orange Woods Woods. And the other day we sent hmm. to Indonesia, we sent an orange wish wish. Those ones are so like sweet. Orange. Yeah, I and I really love how different mm. they are. You yeah. can see That's the orange goose goose, the Sudan, the yellow geisha, mm -hmm. the laurina. Mm -hmm. So everything on your left is orange wish wish, as you can see on those trees. Mm -hmm. Everything on your right is yellow geisha. Oh, wow. The orange color, I love it. Yeah. But you see some of them turn red again. Yeah. Like that one there. Mm, yeah, back there. The same seeds, just turn back to red. <laughs> this variety is from where? What? Woodbush. Actually said, I'm not sure, but that there's a hill that divides Woodbush Town and Gesha Village. Mm. And Woodbush is... 80 something percent Gesha genetically, huh. but it just behaves differently huh. on the Twitter. What What's the different behavior? Twitter, it's sweeter than Gesha. Oh. The florals of Woosh Woosh are not like lemongrass and minty, mm. but like sweet florals like chamomile and calendula. I don't know how to say calendula. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the same, calendula yeah. is the same. Oh, más despacio. <laughs> no, porque nosotros tenemos que ir explicando cosas. Dale, dale. <sighs> muy arriba, muy alta. The coffee pickers yeah. would eat the cherries like this all day long. Yeah. Because it's quite sweet, that mm. means energy. Mm, yeah. Gives them a boost of yes. boost of energy to get to the top. Mm. Hey, my salta. <laughs> It's 37 hectares, this one. Yeah. El Encanto is 126. Wow. So three times this. In El Encanto we have Maragueja, Maracaturra, Moca, Yellow Moca, Orange Castillo, Pink Bourbon, Sidra, Chiroso. Hmm. Hello. Is there a difference between what you chose to plant here versus what you chose to plant there? We pretty much planted there. Whatever we did, we didn't have enough space. Here. Ah, so ah. We had, you had this farm first. Yes, yes. Uh, El Encanto was bought a year ago. Mm. This was this one is almost three years. Mm. So we did have uh, varietals in mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, just I mean we didn't want to have small small lots. Mm. So when we started filling this, we ended up missing like 14 varieties. Mm. That's when we started thinking on a new farm to mm. plant something. Mm -hmm. Actually, El Encanto. When we're on the top, you can see it from here. Mm. It's like in the other side of the hill. Mm. And it's three times this one. Mm. And the lots are way bigger. Yeah. It's a lot to lot to maintain. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we were talking the other day with Christian, who runs the farm. Mm -hmm. And he was telling us that growing a tree from scratch, like 
with its baby to the moment it's big and productive with these kind of varieties can cost from 25 to 35 bucks wow like us dollars yeah yeah and then we have just here we have planted like 65,000 mm. and in the mm. other one it's almost 200,000. Wow, so that's 35 do US dollars per tree. Yeah, wow. I mean from the moment yeah. it was planted yeah. to the moment it's productive. Mm. Yeah. That's I a mean, big for investment. These kind of varieties, for these kind of varieties yeah. because you need a lot of space, mm. a lot of work, fertilizers. Mm. And Lorena three times more you said? What? Lorena three times more? Yes. Mm. Laurina is, is just crazy. We actually regret have to have planted it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Felipe is not willing to plant anymore because we wanted more in the other one because it's selling good. Yeah. But the effort it takes is yeah. just too much. It's at a, selling altitude, good, but but not not still not worth the correct. amount of. You know. At this altitude, if we had a lower altitude farm, mm. probably we would mm. we would give it a chance mm. again. And that's why you should pay more for your coffee. <laughs> So that town there, I'm not sure if they told you, but it's called Pijao. Mm. It's very well known for its quiet environment. So mm. it was recognized as the quietest town worldwide. So you don't you don't hear any, oh, not a lot of noise there. This is ambientation. Yes, morado, Mari. Excess is an excess of caffeine on the tree. Mm. Uh, it's super bitter, so it's not worth for the taste. Mm. But people think it's a uh, good luck to have at least one in your farm. Ah, so. uh, really? <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's why they have it. Uh, I'm gonna but put it on Instagram for the good see, luck. Tell me, tell me a photo con este, the good luck tree. So usually every, I mean, eh, after a, every, you know, 100 or 200 trees, you always have one of these mutations, mm. but people just chop them, just mm. chop them up, the good luck tree. and they just leave one at the farm just as a good luck. <laughs> so any variety can mutate mm. like that. It's called, uh, always it's called coffee purpurazin, and it has Purpura. at least 20 times the caffeine. The papayo, look at the way. How much coffee that one has? Mm, yeah. Wow. On this way, we're gonna see the papayo on our left, so we, yeah. on our right, so we we might be able Where to get. Where's the stripe? In a stripe. Well, no. So we have to go this way. We're gonna end up in the Java, go all the way to the SL28 Geisha, and the stripe is right there. When it's small, it looks like a papayo. Ah! Aquí gritamos todos. Papayo. Te pongo la para que las compare con las otras y verás. Vea las otras como están. Las otras variedades. Uy, man. It's really different this. Papayo. This say yeah, the papayo is so big. Oh, it's big cherry. La pongas al lado de la And it's very very like premature like from one year it's already producing. Small stripe here where the color changes is where the SL28 starts. Mm. It's like a small stripe here and then all the top of the hill there. Because that one is Java. Alright. Mm. Mm. Ah, it's Java over there. Yeah, that one is Java. It's Java. Red Java. Yes, the, the, you know, dark leaves. Yeah. Mm. That's Java. Yes, you wanna go there? The cherry. The, 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 the bigger draw. So these are SL. This is a tail. This is always a tail. Oh, 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 <laughs> These ones are Java? Yes. You see the seed is very long. Mm. Long shape. Yeah, look at that. Wow. That's Java. Super sweet. Mm. Wanna try one? Yeah. Super sweet. Mm -hmm. But that's mm. the cap profile of the one that I mm. dislike this morning. And mm. no, 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 but that one, yeah, I, think, I think, has something. Because Oy, man, our Java, matcha. because <laughs> our Java is very different. It's oh. super, super sweet and round, creamy. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know what? Going up is easy. Going down. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Going down, I tell you. <laughs> wow, 
Juan, ¿qué es esto? Es el, es el 28. Sí. Es el. From here on, if we were to keep boxing that way, it's all gonna be Java and Red Gesha. But we're going this way to see the striped bourbon, the Red Gesha, the Sidra, coming down again. Careful for the orangutans. <laughs> from here, from this corner right here, everything is striped bourbon. Striped bourbon? Yeah, but it's only 700 trees. So now you can see a cherry that has a mm. stripe. Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful. Oh, wow, yeah. This coffee is cupping amazing. Wow, wow. <laughs> Santiago, Santiago vende lo que no hay. Ha vendido para tres veces el, el bourbon rayado. Pero, 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 no, el bourbon rayado. Todo el mundo lo pide. Acabaron con la finca ustedes. Luis Aníbal's farm in Villa Betulia in Acevedo Huila. But uh, as an unstable variety, it has some tall ones and short ones. Mm. The short ones had really high yield, but it's known or thought between the growers that always the high trees, the taller trees, produces a better cup quality. So we only brought seeds from the taller trees in mm. Huila. Mm. And we didn't think about uh, the yield. Mm. So the shorter ones are really, really productive, mm. but the cup quality is probably not the best one. Mm. So we brought only the tall ones and the cup quality is outstanding. It's the best, I, like myself, I consider this the best coffee we have in mm. the company. But we have a, we only have been able to sell like three boxes of these in three mm. years. Mm. Like because that's all you can produce? Yeah, mm. yes. I mean, it's, it's very unique. And, and that's the striped bourbon? For competitions. Yeah. Oh. Here we are at 1950 meters above sea level. Mm -hmm. From here to 2100, it's only red geisha. That's the bigger, the biggest lot in the farm with 7,000 trees. Mm. Uh, so e even if we just keep walking, all we're going to see is just red geisha. Mm -hmm. So we're going back. Yeah. <laughs> going back. Sounds good. Uh, on the other side of that hill mm -hmm. is Tolima department. Mm. Mm -hmm. So this is like the limit of Quindío region, mm. and then from there is Tolima. Mm. So, the size mm. is mm. very different. The, this is the Gesha? Gesha and Sidra, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Tiny, tiny. Uh, does it produce more uh, it's way cherries it's, then? It's very pro yeah, it's very productive though. Sidra is a very nice variety. It was mainly done in a, on a lab. Mm. You know that story, right? Mm. So, mm -mm. no? So, mm. tell me the story. In Nestle, Nestle has a lab mm. yeah. in Ecuador where they are all the time researching for new varieties because they want to look for something that is like resistant to different diseases and also coping really good. Mm. So, they probably develop around 30 to 40 different varieties on a lab mm. every year mm -hmm. and cap them and see how they go. What and then, Nestle in Ecuador? Yes. And uh, so, uh, on, I think it was. 2013 when they develop on the same year improved Tipica and Sidra so in, in, Ecuador. in Ecuador yeah in an Nestle lab but when they capped it it was really good on the cup quality but it did have problems with the diseases leaf rust and also the yield wasn't that productive so they uh, whenever something didn't work they just discard that and go to the next one but the Q graders from the lab consider those the best two varieties they, they have tried in, in Nestle uh, when they were working there. So one of the employees took out one of the seeds from there <laughs> and like stole it and called it Sidra. So they didn't know what was it, but it's actually a natural hybridation between Ethiopian heirloom and bourbon. Hmm. But he just said like... It's not a natural, it's, it's made on a lab. The guy who stole it said Sidra. Yeah, yeah, because... And it, Sidra was born. I don't know, I don't know where the name came from, but that, that's where the variety came from. And yeah. then the guys from La Palma brought it for the first time in Colombia. And it's spread out from there. Mm. And improved Tipica is also mm. made out of Tipica. Mm. So they, you, you've heard of Tipica, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And they did some crosses with different varieties mm. to just give it like a resistant to diseases. Mm. And it worked out, but the yield came mm. uh, yeah. lower than the actual Tipica. Uh -huh. So we also have improved Tipica on the other side of the house. Mm. So this is improved Tipica. The other mm. variety that I told you that was 
developed mm. by Nestlé mm -hmm. Coeur, mm -hmm. almost like 10 years ago, 10, mm -hmm. 12 years ago. So this is like a typica, but it's way more like sweet and fruity than the typica because usually typica is very floral. Yeah, so yeah. So this one is more round and balanced. Ah, uh, and this the is all improved typica. And down the hill we have pink gesha, but it's, mm. it, that that one's far though. Yeah, hard to find. Yeah. The, and these trees are huge. Yeah just as, as the typical mm -hmm. but if you see the difference with the geisha is that the geisha leaves as I mean geisha is also big yeah but the leaves for this one are very thin the mm. geisha leaves are huge mm -hmm. that's how we define it. Cool. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Jardines del Eden I know I learned a ton about the different coffee varietals the growing conditions and I got a good workout on the way up and on the way down that mountain. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you learned something new, what varietals you would most like to taste and what you think about having a farm that's exclusively for competition lots. For some people, it's super impressive because they're taking care of each coffee tree so specifically. Other people might argue that having an entire farm dedicated to competition coffees is a bit much. But I want to know what you think, so comment that below, then make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to see future videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Cheers and happy roasting. <laughs>